In the previous 10 or so videos, we learned about static generation in Next.js. Static generation is a method of pre-rendering where the HTML pages are generated at build time. The pre-rendered static pages can be pushed to a CDN, cached and served to clients across the globe almost instantly. Static content is fast and better for SEO as they are immediately indexed by search engines. All in all, static generation with get static props for data fetching and get static paths for dynamic pages seems like a really good approach to a wide variety of applications in production. However, there are a few issues with static site generation. Firstly, the build time is proportional to the number of pages in the application. Second, a page once generated can contain stale data till the time you rebuild the application. Let's understand how these manifest as problems when building a production grade application with Next.js. We begin with the first point. The build time is proportional to the number of pages in the application. Let me explain how this is an issue with a theoretical example. To build the application we currently have, it takes approximately 25 seconds. Of course, there are a few parameters that play a role, but let's assume the best case scenario. Let's assume a page takes 100 milliseconds to build. If we have a small e-commerce app with around 100 different products, to build the app we would need 10 seconds. Seems reasonable. But if you have a very successful e-commerce app, you might have several thousands of products. For 100,000 products at 100 milliseconds per page, you need slightly over two and a half hours to build your app for production, which is quite a bit of time if you think about it. Keep in mind, it's not just the time, but there are cost implications as well. And this problem of large build times only gets worse with more products you add to the system as every new page increases the overall build time. Now you might argue that you will build your app only once in a while. But if you do that, depending on the nature of your application, you might run into the issue of stale data. For example, an e-commerce app is not an application which you can build and deploy once in a while. Product details, especially product prices, can vary every day and you cannot sit back, relax and build your application once in a while. If you want the latest data in the product pages, you have to rebuild the app. And in doing so, we stumble into the first issue again. Imagine if for a sale, the price of a product is changed from $1,000 to $900. The entire app has to be rebuilt and the page with the updated data will be statically generated. Even for one small change, you have to rebuild the app. And if you have to wait hours together to get a change across to production to ensure there is no stale data displayed to the user, it is definitely a problem that needs attention. Now you might be thinking, hey, you explained about get static paths, which will help us pre-render only few pages at build time and rest of the pages can be pre-rendered on request. Can we not use that to render say 1000 most popular pages and rest of the 99,000 pages can be generated on request? Well, we can't do that because Get static paths works only with dynamic pages. If your application has 90% static pages and 10% dynamic pages, get static paths will not help much. However, we are a bit lucky with regards to that because an e-commerce site typically will have 90% dynamic pages and 10% static pages. 
so we can reduce the total build time by using get static paths. However, it still does not fix the issue of stale data. If you render 1000 pages at build time and the rest are generated based on incoming request using fallback true or fallback blocking, changes in data will not update the already pre-rendered pages. So even if you change the product price, after a page has been generated, the same page is served for subsequent requests. And this is the problem I want to help you understand with an example as it is really important for building optimized Next.js applications. Now for this particular example, I had to do some coding behind the scenes. Let me walk you through what I've done. First, I've installed a package called JSON server. This package lets you create a fake REST API with zero coding. I recommend you take a look at it after you watch this video to get an understanding of how you can serve mock APIs. The package, as I've already shown, is present in package.json. Next, in the root folder, I've created a file called db.json. This file contains a list of three items as a products array. Each product has an ID, title, price, and description. And back in package.json, I've added a script serve-json which creates an API endpoint on localhost port 4000 serving the list of products. So in the terminal, let's run yarn serve-json. Head to the browser and navigate to localhost 4000 slash products. Now products is the key for our JSON and back in the browser, you can see the list of products being returned. If you add an ID after products, so localhost 4000 slash products slash one, it returns the individual product data. Pretty powerful as you can see. We're able to create fake REST API endpoints by simply defining a JSON file. Now this JSON server package has a lot more features which I recommend you explore in your free time. For now, this product list is all we need. Now you might question, why did I do this instead of reusing JSON placeholder API? Well, that is because for this particular example, I need the API data to change over time, which is not possible with JSON placeholder. With JSON server though, we are in control of the data we serve at any given time. All right, now that we have the API up and running, let me walk you through the product pages that I've set up. In the pages folder, I've created another folder called products. This folder contains two files, index.js, which contains the product list component and product id.js, which contains the product details. The code within these two files should seem familiar to you as it is the exact same code we had used for the post list component and the post component. The only difference is the API endpoints inside get static props. We now make a request to our local JSON server. So in index.js, we have the product list component. This page contains get static props, which makes a get request to slash products. An array of three products is fetched, which is returned as products and injected into the component as props. In the component JSX, we iterate over the list of products, rendering the product ID, title, and price. Next, we have the product detail page. Once again, 
we have get static props which extracts the product ID from params, makes an API call to slash products slash product ID, and returns the individual product data as prop, which is then passed into the component. We destructure it from props and render the product ID, title, price, and this time, even the description. Now, if you recollect, Whenever we want to pre-render a dynamic page, we also need to use the getStaticPaths function and return the paths array to inform Next.js of the possible product ID values to pre-render this particular page. For our example, I'm instructing Next.js to pre-render a page for only product ID equal to 1 and I'm also set fallback to true. So pages for product ID 2 and 3 are not generated at build time but are generated when a request is made. So to also account for the fallback page, we've used router.ease fallback to render a loading text. That is pretty much the setup I've done behind the scenes. There is nothing that we haven't seen before so hopefully you're able to keep up with the code. If for any particular reason, you were not able to quite understand the explanation, please do go back a few videos and first understand about get static props and get static paths before proceeding. Now to make sure we haven't lost track of the problem we have, let me state it again. The problem is that of stale data where the external data has changed, but the pages do not update to reflect the change. Let's see that in action by building and running our application. In a new terminal, run the command yarn build. And once the build completes, you can see that in the build folder within server pages, we have products.html, which corresponds to the product list page in index.js. And within the products folder, we have 1.html and 1.json statically generated at build time, which correspond to productid.js. Of course, with product ID being equal to one. Now that we have built our application, let's run it using yarn start. In the browser, if we now navigate to slash products, we see the list of three products, ID, title, and price. If I navigate to slash products slash one, we get the details of the first product. But here lies the problem. In our db.json file, let's update the price for product one. Let's make it 900 from 1000. If we now go back to the browser and refresh the page, the price is still 1000. Same is the case with the products page as well. It still shows 1000. If we query our db.json directly though, you can see the product price has indeed changed 900. So our app is now serving stale data. But hang on, other product pages have not been generated at build time that is product two and product three. So we should not face this issue with those pages, right? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to change product two price from 2000 to 1500, Christmas sale perhaps. If we now go back to our API, refresh, product two price is 1500 as expected. If we go back to our app though, refresh, the product list page still serves stale data and that is sort of expected since it was generated at build time. However, 
if I navigate to slash products slash two, to our surprise, we see the price is 1,500. Since product ID two was not returned from get static paths, this page is pre-rendered on initial request or statically generated on the initial request. And because of that, we don't see the stale data here. At the moment, our product list page shows 2000 as the price, whereas the detail page shows 1500 as the price. Now you might think this is the only problem we have at the moment, but I'm afraid that's not the case. Back in db.json, if I further decrease the price from 1500 to 1000 for product 2, and refresh the API, you can see the price has updated. If I refresh the details page though, you can see that the price remains 1500. The data is stale yet again. And this is because this page has been statically generated after the initial request. Any subsequent requests will serve the already generated and cached page. And that is the page where price was set to 1500. As you can see, this is a problem which can't be ignored. So there was a need to update only those pages which needed a change without having to rebuild the entire app. To solve that problem, Next.js introduced the concept of incremental static regeneration. With ISR, Next.js allows you to update static pages after you've built your application, which means you can statically generate individual pages without needing to rebuild the entire site, effectively solving the issue of dealing with stale data. So we now know what is incremental static regeneration and what problem it solves. The next question is how do we make use of it in our application? As it turns out, Next.js makes it really simple. In the getStaticProps function, apart from the props key, we can specify a revalidate key. The value for revalidate is the number of seconds after which a page regeneration can occur. Now what does this mean for a page in our application? Let's understand with an example in the next video.